As you can tell by the title of this video, I am going to be doing a fruit review today in Vietnam versus US. Keep in mind that the fruits that I'll be reviewing in this video will be the fruits that are bought, you know, the ones that are from commercial farms. I'll introduce those fruits to you and then I'll do a review on the tasting part. All right, let's get started. Welcome to Vietnam. I'm so excited to show you the fruits that I have here. This is called a jum jum. It's a, um, a rambutan. I've done a previous episode with this, but it's never looked as fresh as these, not in my memory at least. And there's also the yellow variety. This one looks like it ripens red, but there is a yellow variety that looks more like this. So we'll open these up to see if they're any better, you know, fresh from the tropics rather than imported in the States. And here's something really interesting about oranges over here. So citrus is actually a subtropical uh, fruit. So they grow more like better in like temperate climates and climates that gets a little more cold. And it's actually the cold weather that makes the chlorophyll change somehow and turn them more like orange, the yellow orange color. That's why in the tropics, a lot of the citrus you see are actually, they just kind of stay green, but they are, uh, they are actually ripe. So we'll open this up and, and, and taste it. These fruits are called yosu, which is called, I think literal translation is breast milk. This is a star apple. I'll show you why in just a little bit. This is actually currently in season. When you come to Vietnam or in the tropics this time of the year, the end of the year, there's actually not a whole lot of fruits in season at the farms. But this one, this fruit is actually in season currently. Here's something I found really interesting is that there's these like pineapples that look slightly different to shapes. I'll have to find out if these two are the same varieties, but look how different they look. <laughs> That's so interesting to me that the top is not really like huge, like the ones I'm used to seeing in the States. And when you look, they, they actually harvest these with quite a lot of extra sometimes with the stem on the bottom. So that means there's these attachments, these suckers that grow out here and you can actually remove these and plant them. And they smell really good. I can't wait to mm, open one of these up. This pomelo, it's like a, I believe it's related to the grapefruit. It tastes very similar to a grapefruit, but it is so large as you can see. Yeah. And they love using this for offering to, uh, you know, putting on an altar for uh, ancestors and even to, you know, like uh, Buddha, things like that. Okay, so let's start the taste test. Let's try the rapatat. It seems easy enough to cut. I have a more thorough video on the rapatat if you're interested in learning more about it. I'll put that link below. there's a seed inside. The ones in the seed taste pretty good, but these ones seem to have more flavor. I don't know if it's the variety or that it's actually in like the true tropical area. Let's try one more just, just to have a more fair comparison. It's like this is a good one. But these ones doesn't seem as juicy, but they definitely have a more a stronger flavor to them that I really like. This one's more juicy than the last one, but it's definitely not as juicy as the ones I had in the States. I mean, the time of the year when they pick it and all of that would make a difference in this, I believe. Since there are no rambutans or jum jum in season in the US right now, I'll show you the clip of the ones that I tasted a while ago. And these ones were grown in Mexico and they were really tasty as well. For this entire plate, I was able to get it for just two bucks. Mmm. Oh, it's so juicy. Mmm. It's so sweet. 
they're juicy, but just not as fragrant as the ones in Vietnam. And I think the ones in Vietnam would have, uh, would taste even better if they were actually, you know, in the middle of the season, but they were reaching the end of the season when I was there. So they weren't as tasty, but still really good. So I think in this round, it just really depends. Do you prefer the more juicy or more fragrant? For me, I'm just gonna call it a tie. Now let's open a tangerine. I remember these, ooh, being super fragrant, more fragrant than I remember having them in this in the US. I mean, these are all slightly different varieties anyway. It peels really easily. Like, look at this. Even though it's green. Hmm. It's really sweet. There's barely any sourness to this, but the, the flavor is very faint. But what I remember this as a kid is when I peel this, you can see like the oils coming out of the skin. I mean, can you, I hope the camera can pick this up. I mean, look at that. I mean, look at that. Up. I mean, look at that. When I squirt this thing, it's a crazy amount of oil it's in there. It's strong. So even though this is green, it is definitely ripe and it's, it's sweet. Here in the U.S., our oranges, citrus, and tangerines would ripen orange or yellow, like this tangerine. So let's go ahead and try this one out. These tangerines are from the market. They're, they're flavorful, but a little more on the sour side for my personal taste. I have had tangerines that are way better than this, but this one actually isn't even a bad one. The ones at the farmer's market usually that I've had are sweeter. But yeah, this is a lot more, it has more flavor than the ones in Vietnam. The Vietnam one was less tang, but also with less, it doesn't have a strong of flavor. Mm. This doesn't, um, no oil. It's like more dried up. But even the fresh ones I, I picked here, it's it, it doesn't have that much oil that would like spray at you. So with that said, I'd say one point for tangerines in the US. I think we should try the star apple. You'll see why this is called um, a, a milk, milk fruit or breast milk fruit. All of this milky stuff. Look at that. Oh, it's so juicy. And it's just like a really sweet milky fruit, but it doesn't taste anything like like fattiness to it at all. I just cut this sideways. Look at that. So I think this is why they call this a star apple. Look at this when you cut it in the center. It's somewhat of a star shape. So the portion that you eat is mainly just like that more translucent section. Just a little bit of that sap flavor, but I'm not sure if maybe if you have like a more ripe one, how stickiness would go away. But yeah, it gets a little sticky, but even though it looks milky, it's it's really, it doesn't taste anything like creamy or dairy or coconutty, like nothing of that creaminess. It's just really like runny, more like water. And it's mainly, this is like a lightly sweetened fruit. It's not like one of those strong tasting fruits. Well, I've never had star fruits here in the US, but they do grow in Hawaii and Florida. Uh, so I guess I can't do a review on this unless say Miami Fruits sent me some of their fruits. But if you're really curious of how they taste, you can order them through Miami Fruits. No, this is not a sponsored episode, but if they like to, I wouldn't mind. Um, their fruits are really unique, but pricey. So yeah, one point for Vietnam, or should I not? give any points in this round. Now I'm really curious if the pineapples from Vietnam taste any better than the ones from the States. 
Look at this one. It comes with these little shoots and you can just remove these pups. Look at that, just like that. And I can peel back a couple of these leaves or I think they're called leaves. And you can plant them. Let's cut this open. I'm gonna try to get my aunt to grow this. Yeah, yeah. It's okay, it's okay. Look at that. It's really sweet. But I think this is a my aunt's gonna help me cut the pineapple instead. Thank you. It's a little acidic and it has a pretty good balance between like tart and sweet, but it's not like a very strong pineapple flavor. I would have to say that it smells better than it tastes. <laughs> this one, at least. But the fiber is like, it's more soft. It kind of like falls apart easier when you chew on it, like bite on it versus the ones I'm used to, you know, back home. Let's try this one. I really like the way this one is shaped. Okay, now I'm gonna hand it over to my aunt to cut it. Wow. Okay, here is that one that's like a tower. This one's like overripe, it's starting to about to ferment, but Mm. But the acidity is less than the other one. I still prefer this one. So far, these ones are definitely not anything special. Not that they claim that these are anyway, but like this is a pretty common pineapple you find around town. They smell really good, but they don't, they don't have a strong of a pineapple flavor. Here is a little pineapple plant that grew from the top of the pineapple I removed from a previous video I did, and that I tasted the pineapple called Sugar Loaf. It is a more rare, special variety grown in Hawaii, but they do grow them in a massive, you know, quantity. Mm. It smells really good when before I cut it, but actually, now that it's cut, the smell is more mild, like more mellow than the yellow ones. It has more sweet than tart, but it is not like an extreme sugary pineapple. Well, something with this sort of like a tartness at the end, um, if compared to like a regular yellow pineapple, the yellow pineapples would probably have a little more acidity. The sugar loaf pineapples are not grown conventionally, so they will have a better taste than the ones you can find at regular markets. But I usually have a pretty good experience buying the common pineapples at, say, Costco. Even though they're conventionally grown, they still taste better than the ones I had in Vietnam. But I am just judging based on the two pineapples that I had in this video. I'm sure there's other varieties in Vietnam that taste amazing. And hopefully this one will be amazing in a couple of years. Okay, now we're gonna open the pomelo, but instead of opening this one, actually I can't open this one right now because we need to offer this, put it on the altar first. But this one is ready to eat. We're gonna cut this one open for you. Okay, so, wow, so fragrant. Wow, so this is such a beautiful use of the fruit. Some people would save the green part, so just the peel, the outer peel, boil it in water and, um, wash their hair with it and then the white part you see in the rind 
It's also edible. It's pretty pretty bitter. Wow, it's pink. That's beautiful. So the white part is pretty bitter, but it has medicinal properties. Okay, here's a pink pomelo. See how it just looks pretty much like, just like how grapefruits grow. Mmm. Mm -hmm. It's very sweet. It has like a more drier texture than a grapefruit. But like, it's really sweet. It's barely anything like sour in this thing. Doesn't have much of like a bitter aftertaste like a grapefruit would. Like that quinine taste that you may leave. You know, taste in a grapefruit. This is a pomelo grown by my friend's dad. Since this is homegrown, not for commercial use, I'm not going to enter this in the review. Or I'm not going to give it a point. So sorry, Joe. But you're um jai boy ngong them. But I will open this up to try it out with you guys. <laughs> uh, so yeah, since I just got back, I haven't had a chance to pick one up at the grocery store to do the review for you guys. However, I will say the ones that are uh, commercially grown um, in the U.S. are not as good as the commercially grown ones in Vietnam. They're not as sweet and usually they have a little more bitter taste or just uh, more like tart. Okay, I'm having trouble opening this thing. Ah, I smell it already. All right, got it. Oh, this one's pretty juicy. Mmm. Ngong wa. God. Mm. That's so, so sweet. Oh, I love that bite. Mm. So fragrant too. More fragrant than a lot of pomelos that I've had in my life. These pomelos are very fragrant. It has a kind of like a floral scent, which um, also reminds me of uh, Long Sat. So the winner goes to, I don't even know, does it matter? I never really wanted to call this a competition. It's just more of a comparison of um, uh, fruits in different, uh, grown in different places. I hope you had fun joining me on this fruit tasting video. Uh, I will have more fruit videos coming up as well as some farm tours that I did in Vietnam that I'm really excited to share with you guys. So hit the subscribe button and the bell notification so you won't miss out on the future episode. If you're looking for plants and seeds to start your garden, be sure to check out wendylin.com. I'll put the link down below for you. Thank you. I'll see you right back here in the next one. Bye.